I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And we've got new developments, new recordings that have been uh, released to play for you in a case that we've been covering. The case involves uh, a couple, Lindsay and Robert Shiver. I mean, this was like the ideal couple. They met at a fitness class in college. He's the football player. She's a cheerleader. She's a, a, a pageant woman. They got married in March of 2010. Three children, beautiful family, um, private jet, $2.5 million home, house in the Bahamas. Um, but then Rob filed for divorce in April of this year, citing adultery. Apparently, she was having an affair, or allegedly having an affair with this man, Terrence Bethel. 28 years old from the Bahamas where they had their vacation home and would fly down there on the uh, family jet. Uh, he worked at Grabber's Bar and may have met Lindsay at that bar. Hmm. So what happened? An alleged conspiracy between um, Terrence and Lindsay to hit man to murder her husband. Now, the, the, the alleged plot was foiled, but she's been arrested. She's out on bond, but cannot leave the Bahamas. The alleged hitman is uh, Farron Newbold, 29-year-old with green eyes. I always say that. Uh, he's a father. He's an aspiring music producer. He's the son of a local politician. I don't even know if he's actually like a real like hitman hitman. I don't know. They claim it was all a joke, um, but obviously they'll figure this out inside the Bahamian courts. But in the meantime... Um, the body cam we've been showing you in this case is from February to April. The couple called uh, 911 on each other as many as five times. Okay? And the calls continued after April when divorce papers were filed, and sometimes the police would respond, and we have seen some of these, these uh, videos and trying to get insight into what exactly was happening in this household, in this relationship. So tonight, what do we have for you? We've got 911 calls, and these are calls from Robert Shiver to 911. A lot of information revealed here as, you, as we get inside of this relationship and try to figure out, was there an actual motive for her to plot his murder? Um, what, what, what was the situation? Let's take a listen. So... Uh, my wife just got back from out of town, and I uh, believe that we are heading down the road of getting divorced. She just cut my cell phone off um, from Verizon. She called Verizon and had my cell phone disconnected, so I'm calling on my mother's phone at the Verizon store because the only way I can get it back active is if she releases it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to go over to uh, our home. And with the way that she is behaving, I feel like she might try and call the police to try to set me up as soon as I get there. And I wanted to try to get out in front of it because I'm not a, a risk of, you know, doing anything crazy. I'm just trying to go to my house and if I need to pack my stuff and leave, I can pack my stuff and leave. Um, but my kids are there and, you know, I don't want it to be presented as she goes and screams bloody murder, calls the police so I thing to try to have me uh, carried off in a police car. Hey, sir, uh, the police will usually, like if you want an escort to pack like personal belongings or something, they'll stand by for like 15 minutes. But if it, you're like trying to get all of your stuff or something, it's going to take longer than that. You usually have to go through the sheriff's department and make arrangements to go over there and have a deputy go with you. Well, nothing is um, or said where I can't go over to my home. I'm just okay. really concerned about her trying to set me up. I don't want her to try to uh, play this game of she's a victim when I haven't done anything. Yeah. So if, if she calls the police and says, my husband is irate, can you please come over here? Mm -hmm. And the law comes over there. What is the risk of me getting carted off in a police car in front of my kids. 
I can't I answer that question for you, sir. Most of the time, they're just going to ask one of you to leave the property to de-escalate things. You just got back into town. Do you, were you working on town or something? I've been working all day today. She okay. just got back into town um, from okay. a long weekend. Okay. I'll have one of the supervisors give you a phone call, okay? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Fascinating to hear. I mean, things are not good. And this is February. He doesn't file until April, so things are, are bad there. And I guess it, I don't know if he knows or suspects about the affair or if it's, I don't, we don't know. But clearly, he is suspicious that she's trying to set him up and that the trust has been broken in this relationship. Now, here's a call from April 12th. This is really strange, really bizarre. And when we heard this, we're like, where, where is this coming from? What does this mean? Take a listen. I'm just getting 911. Listen, I do not have an emergency right now. Um, but I was wanting to just kind of put you guys on notice of something that has is, is been kind of odd. Mm -hmm. Are you the right person to talk to, or do I need to be transferred to a dispatch or what? This is dispatch. Okay, so the day at work, um, I had a letter delivered to me, and it was a USB thumb drive. And it didn't have a return to sender address or anything, and so I plugged the thumb drive in, and it had all these pictures of my wife on it from about two weeks ago when we were out of the country. <laughs> and... The same thumb drive was delivered to my parents' house uh, about a mile away in an unmarked envelope. And it looks like, glancing through, that it was almost like a, a private investigator. But we have spoken with everybody that uh, we know, mm -hmm. and they've all confirmed that they, they don't know what we're talking about. Okay. So I don't know if we have, like, a potential stalker or, uh, you know, some, some lunatic that's in town that has been mm -hmm. following my wife around. Okay. But we just wanted to let you guys know it, it might do, or we would like it if you guys could maybe, you know, just make a couple of uh, passes by our home tonight. We just kind of went through and checked the whole house ourselves. Um, okay, do you want to get a report as well? I don't think we need a report just yet because we don't. We're trying to find out more information on who took the pictures, and we're talking to some people to have some security cameras to see if we can get a picture of the individual first. Okay, were the pictures taken while you were out of the country, or were they taken while you were here? They were taken while we were out of the country in the Bahamas, and for spring break a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they just showed up at my office today. Uh, that was mailed to me, but then uh, an envelope was also excuse me, an unmarked um, envelope was placed in my parents' okay. mailbox with the same thumb drive. Okay, you want them to kind of ride uh, ride around your residence a few times throughout the night? Yeah, if that's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. so they can kind of patrol both sides, I think would be just some extra reassurance that, you know, everything's okay. We've got our alarm on. Okay, and, yes, sir. Yeah, All right. Everybody's good, so. I just wanted to see if you guys could help with that. Yes, sir. We'll have, we'll definitely have them do that. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right, Bye. What was that? A thumb drive, pictures of Lindsay down in the Bahamas when they're on their, I guess, family trip for spring break, sent to Robert and to Robert's parents in Georgia. Let's bring in the think tank, please. Joining us tonight in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy. Also with us in Phoenix, Arizona, criminal defense attorney, the lawyer who represented Jody Aries, Kirk Nermy, and deputy public defender, L.A. County, Philip Dubé. Eklund, what? I want to start with this USB. Like, what is that? What is um, that? I I think if the prosecutor um, would play their cards, if they're going to say conspiracy to commit murder, that she set it up to show that um, she was being stalked prior to. So when the alleged, you know, the intended victim uh, is passed away, they at, le at least have proof 
that um, somebody was stalking them in the Bahamas. But the issue is, why didn't you send it to her parents? So I think that that's that's the biggest issue. But um, for the prosecution, they need to show a meeting of the minds in order to pr- um, in order to prove the conspiracy to commit this murder. Yeah, Kirk, this is some strange, strange stuff. But I think Eklund's explanation makes sense to me. If you're if you're starting this crazy plot, so you got to create a little drama before the hit. Yeah, I mean, you bet, Vinny. I, my thoughts are exactly what Eklund thought. This is a, you know, this is a woman who, you know, has shown signs of narcissism later on down this way. It makes sense to me that she's plotting this out. She's trying to make herself look like the victim. I mean, we heard uh, the uh, victim in this case say just that, right? She's going to make herself to be a victim. This, These pictures are a way to make herself look like a victim. Like she's being stalked, she's being harassed, her husband is doing things to her to kind of give her license to respond in the way she did, at least in her own narcissistic mind. So I think that's what we're seeing here. We're really seeing the development of a plot at this point in time on one of these trips to set up kind of what's going to happen down the road. Yeah, well, Philip Dubé, let's 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 look at it this way, right? So, hypothetically, if Bahamian authorities don't intercept this murder for hire plot, and let's let's again presume, even though they're presumed innocent, let's presume that it was an actual murder for hire plot, and the murder goes down, this USB mailing becomes a big part of the investigation. Oh, yeah, of course it does, because clearly you have somebody who's after one or both of them, and the homicide itself was carried out. Uh, If on top of that they get those uh, WhatsApp messages that were shared or uh, sent among the three co-conspirators, I think all three of them will be brought in for not just conspiracy to commit murder, but actual murder. I think they could all be brought in on a felony murder or uh, on an aiding and abetting theory. Alternatively, it's very possible that he just has a guardian angel, that he has a trusted friend who is hip to everything that's going on and in his own way is trying to tip him off because this person might truly believe he is clueless, he's completely oblivious, that yeah, there may be trouble in paradise, but that there is in fact no uh, affair going on that's quite so overt. But I don't know, I don't think we have enough information. I think uh, my co-panelists might be overestimating her cunningness, if you will. I don't think she's that smart. I think so. You can respond, I, Eklund. I think so. I think that the if it was somebody trying to set them up, then you would see pictures of her and her, uh, the guy that she's having an affair with. Then that would be a setup. The fact that it's just pictures of her, how convenient, and not pictures of her and him, how convenient. So I really think, and the fact that it went to their direct addresses for his his home address and the parents' home address, that's convenient. In addition to, we don't have an additional, um, that the, the, this USB did not go to her parents or anybody else, but the two people involved in the divorce is too convenient. So I do believe that it's they have a really strong case against her. However, the co-defendants, I don't think they'll, I think they'll have a hard time um, really uh proving meeting of the minds, that they all were on the same plan. It seems that one person did the USB and didn't think that through. You know, when, when I think again about this USB, and we think about the call that he made, right? He is, he's concerned that there's a stalker, and you're concerned about a stalker, and then all of a sudden someone's murdered. You know, guys like me, you know, try to put two and two together. Well, let's find this stalker when it's not the stalker at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Hey, Kirk, what do you think about the nature of their relationship? Because the first call we heard was from February, where he's very suspicious of her. Then they get the USB, and it seems like they're still together, and they want someone driving by the house. Well, look, let's back up a bit. This, to me, this is pre-planning, and you understand the nature of the relationship 
this is a set, setting up the defense before she commits the crime. In the same way, the husband knows that he, in some way, he knows that she's going to do something. He knows that in his heart, he's trying to, you know, call the police, contact someone to make sure that he's not a victim of this. And we can see that she's doing exactly just that. She's she's setting up this stalker theory, and I disagree with Philip in this. And I think she's very clever. No criminal thinks they're going to get caught, so I think she's being very very clever, setting up this stalker theory before the actual killing goes down. And this is just a different tactic of what her husband was saying. So obviously, he knew something was up. He knew that she was capable of this. He he was concerned about it. And we saw actually this come to fruition with this plot. Thankfully, he's unharmed. All right. Eklamercy, Kirk Nurmi, Philip Dubay, they're with us the whole hour. Up next.